People, 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 good morning, good morning, good morning. You know who it is, Arsenio Buck reporting live from Bangkok. No class this morning, no class at 10 a.m., but I do have class at 1 p.m., which is a hell of a lot better because now I can actually relax just a little bit more, but on top of that, having still a productive morning. But until... I guess until until I get to work, I need to do a little working out, but the most important thing right now is the podcast. Baby, we're going into principle number 59, which is master the spending game. Now, people, this is extremely, I mean extremely important because, you know, a lot of people, well, all of us, we want to make millions of dollars a year. We want to have a big, expensive home. We want to have a, a rich and luxurious lifestyle. Okay, we want to build a high net worth and have investments and in, well, not all of us, but most of us. And we want to have a beautiful car. We want to have a we want to impress the women. You know, what's so funny. I'm gonna tell you about a quote real fast. Will Rogers once said too many people spend money they haven't earned to buy things they don't want to impress people they don't like. How true is that? You know, living here in Thailand, I'm like. You guys, again, I'm going to talk about this budget, all right? Because if you make 300 US dollars a month, which is equivalent to 9,000 baht a month, you know, without the currency going on right now, I mean, how the hell are you supposed to, aff- how are you going to buy a car, buy a car that's almost 20,000, 30,000 US dollars, 600 to 900,000 baht? You know what they do? They go to the bank. They go to this bank called Tanachat. And they say, Tanachat, I want money to buy a car. Tanachat says, okay, well, the Japanese are shipping so many cars over here and getting pounded with import, the government import tax by about 300%. And we're just going to give you money. And uh, it's a win-win situation because if you stop paying for your car, we take your car and we still win in the end because we already paid for the car. So these stupid ass people are literally going to the bank. They're getting out a loan, they buy the car, and then they're literally paying what the money they don't even have. Listen, people, they're literally paying between 10,000 and 15,000 baht a month, which is equivalent to three to 500 US dollars a month, without insurance, without gas. They're literally paying more than what they make in a month. Come on. Guys, imagine this, my Americans out there. Let's do a little bit of math. You make 1,600 US dollars a month. You say, I want a car. This car costs 1800 US dollars a month. Are you uh, literally, you have to pay 1800 US dollars a month and you only make 1600 US dollars a month. First and foremost, you're not even going to be able, you're not even going to be able to pay rent, to pay for food, to pay for everything else. You're not going to be able to save, invest, nothing whatsoever because all this money is going right to the car. Does that make any goddamn sense? This is how poor the money management here is in Thailand. Why the hell would you pay for something that you can't even afford, let alone that you don't even need because of public transportation here? People buy cars just so they can be considered in the same conversation as the people who want to be that rich person, but they actually go home to a very shitty home. Listen, I've seen people walk around with Louis Vuitton bags, have a lot of money, this and that. They go back to the home and they live in a one-bedroom shack. Whereas they eat on the floor. They eat noodles off the floor. This is exactly what has done. People have not. People are. They're the biggest fools of the spending game on the face of the planet here in this country. Because Americans, we literally budget a hell of a lot better. I mean, if you make 1600 US dollars a month, okay, car, car isn't necessary. Because the thing is, if your rent is between four and 800, that's 25 to 50% of your income for one month. If you pay for a car that you have to pay monthly installments of about two to three hundred dollars, plus the insurance, which is going to be around one to two hundred dollars, plus everything else, you're going to have very little money to save. That is poor money management, okay? You guys need to begin being intelligent about how you spend your money and what you spend it on, especially on things that you just do not need. Because consumer debt, more not even just the car payments, we're talking mortgage payment, student loan, you name it. What little money you have that is left over each month, you end up paying off past 
purchase stuff that you've already purchased in the past rather than uh, investing into your future lifestyle. So with that little money you have left, you're like, oh, I have to pay off some student loan debt. See, this is exactly what capitalist America wants you to do. They want you to pay, 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 pay. So they're making that residual income in their pocket for the those companies are just they are ecstatic. I fell into that trap and I learned a hell of a lot more, a hell of a lot faster. Throw away those credit cards because they're going to run you right into the goddamn ground. Successful people, on the other hand, they live below their means. They pay less for what they need. They pay less for what they need. Okay, so you need to really look at it. Look at it this way. How much did you spend last year? Or listen, okay, if you don't know last year, how about this? How much did you spend last month? Okay, because if you got, let's say, 3000 U.S. dollars and you weren't able to save any of it. Yeah, of course, me, I went on a vacation, okay? Obviously, that's much, much better, okay? That's not saying, hey, I'm going to purchase a car that I do not need. No. You know, I was thinking about purchasing a car in a country that I might be not, I might not be staying in for much longer. And then I said, you know what? No, that doesn't make any goddamn sense. The public transport is just as fine. As soon as they build these high trains that extend all the way out to the outer provinces in Bangkok, I'm fine. Spending too much, especially on cars or whatever, can wreak havoc on whatever financial goals you have or just your financial life in general. It keeps you in debt. It prevents you from saving anything. Turns you into a goddamn consumer rather than a goddamn creator. Rather than creating wealth and accumulation. If Listen, if you can't seem to curb your spending, try this exercise. Go through your cabinet. Go through your closet. Go through everything in your apartment. Pull out everything. that Take out everything that you haven't used in the past year. Women. Oh, yeah. Women. The women out there that are listening right now. Yes, this includes clothes. Shoes, jewelry, electronics, blankets, crafts, whatever. Pull it all out and put it into the middle of your living room. And see how much money you actually spent on that garbage, let alone. Gather it all together and put it either in your damn living room, your garage, wherever it is. Then add up the price of everything you paid for each item. Most people will still have tags on all those clothes. I'm talking about the women out there. People who buy clothes, especially people who just go window shopping or go to the market and buy stuff that they don't need. Do you see me just buying a whole bunch of Under Armour or buying a whole bunch? No, you see me buying Herbalife because I am actually invested into my health, my healthy future and my business. <clears throat> that is a chari- That's perfect. But you don't see me just going to the store buying things that I do not need. If you look at some of my black shoes, yes, they st- they are still comfortable. Regardless of how they look, and I'm not trying to impress anyone at this given moment. Now, yes, when I do start working at a company and when I get the bigger opportunities and I have to speak in front of, you know, I have huge speaking engagements. Yes, I will buy new shoes, but I'm not just going to buy stuff that I do not need. Are you guys following me? When you add up what these items cost, you may find the total will be more than your current credit card debt. I was a fool. Yes, I was part of fool's gold back when I was 18 and 19 years old. I ran up a ridiculous credit card and I got slapped right in the face with so many d- d- ridiculous fees because I was spending more than what I had. Start paying cash for virtually everything. Cash is more immediate. It makes you think about what you're buying, right? You'll probably find yourself spending less than you would if you use credit cards, honestly, because if you have $1,000 or $30 in your pocket... You can only go to that 1,000 baht or $30 in your pocket. You're not going to say, oh, I have a credit card. I could pay actually $50 or $100. You're you're paying more than what you can afford. But when you have cash, the cash is right there. That's all you have, that money, and that's it. And don't hold a lot of cash on you either because that's going to actually not curb your spending appetite. Every potential purchase will be considered more carefully. Necessary, okay? Uh, large pur- uh, large purchases will be put off for the most part just because you're not going to have that money to make the large purchases. You guys following me? Reduce the cost of your rich lifestyle too, okay? So that means 
Jack knows a lot of people who do this all the time and yet maintain an aggressive saving and investment program. So example, there was a woman. There was a woman that Jack knew, okay? This particular woman, she purchased $685 season tickets to the opera for only just $123. So when the tickets weren't in season, she bought them for 82% off. So let's just say the opera runs from uh, June to August. She purchased these tickets probably in November or December. Or she actually just sends in the money and says, oh, I want to want I want to see only these people. And that's it. And it's kind of like a design your own series. And guess what? The people are going to take the money no matter what, because it's money. Right. Another friend of Jack Canfield, he actually he's a collector of vintage cars and he actually buys convertibles, but he buys convertibles in the winter months. You see what I mean? He doesn't buy convertibles in the summer months where as everyone's going to be driving a convertible. No, he buys them when everyone wants insulated heat within the, you know, in, in their cars. They're not going to, you're not going to drive a convertible in minus 10 degrees in New York. No, 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 no. When it comes to the summer, oh, you're going to run a ride at that top down. So he buys the cars in the winter. See, that is smart. To these people who are all aggressive savers. They live this kind of lifestyle on as little money as possible. It has become a game for these people. You see what I mean? You know what's crazy? There was a financial mentor, okay? What will make you truly happy? That's what you have to ask yourself. A lot of people would say, you know, if you actually read uh, Paulo Coelho's book, uh, Adultery, there was a woman, a character in the book, and, you know, she's like, you know what? I'm not happy with my marriage. I'm so depressed. My husband's always away, stuff like that. And, uh, she ended up, she's like, you know what, for me to get out of my, escape out of my depression for about 10 minutes to an hour, I would go to the store and buy expensive name brand bags, puts me in a little, uh, I guess you could say a euphoric stage, a euphoric, uh, emotion, emotional mindset for, again, 10 minutes to an hour. And then she goes right back to what she was at before. So do, do items, does materialism actually make you happy? Well, financial mentor. Todd, let's call him Todd. He recommends that you add up the cost of all the unnecessary stuff you've been spending on and compare that amount to what you could be spending that money for. A rainy day fund, enjoying a rich and rewarding life experience. Paying for things, right? It could be anything. Having a virtual assistant, having a personal assistant. Put up all the costs. Think about it. Just think about it, people. Like example, if you make three thousand U.S. dollars a month, nine thousand, ninety thousand baht, and you spend up to fifteen thousand baht on a lot of bullshit each month, you know how much five hundred U.S. dollars? Do you know how much you could put into a savings, an emergency fund, and a mutual? You see what I mean? This it, it's crazy. It's mind boggling what people spend money on. I mean, instead of just putting so much money towards a Louis Vuitton bag. You could put that into a mutual that get, that has a lot of diff, like a lot of interest or bonds. There are a lot of different bonds out there: A bond, B bond, C bond. All those bonds, okay? Or you could go to Merrill Hodge or Schwab, Charles Schwab, and you could figure out it would do the uh, Roth IRA, and you could figure out how much money you know your particular household makes and how much. And do you qualify for this? And can you start making uh, uh what is it monthly withdrawals to put into? People can do this. Rather than paying 40000 baht up to $1,000 US dollars for a stupid-ass Louis Vuitton bag, I'm really focusing on a lot of Thai women out here because they feel you're buying stuff for people you don't even like. I'm not talking about yourself. You want to impress people who don't even exist so you can be considered in that little group, whereas you guys sit with your wrists all at a 90-degree angle with a glass of wine and a cigar. Shit doesn't make any sense. Reconsider whether you really need anything, especially student loans, for all those student loans out there. In America right now, okay, student loans have yet to been repaid out of almost the entire total credit debt for all American households combined. Nearly $1 trillion. Nearly $1 trillion have been borrowed for tuition, books, and living expenses. Some students graduate with almost 200,000 U.S. dollars or more in debt, hampering their ability to buy a house, to get married, start a business, travel, or do anything. 
It's crazy because Dennis is like, yeah, you know.